Uh, okay, so let's start. Uh, as always, uh, is there any question with anything? No? Uh, so, so today we'll see local duality, and that's the goal. But so uh, let's recap a little bit. So last time we were talking about the following, we can look at a ring and around any point P of, of the spectrum of this ring, we can look at certain uh, local cohomology models. Okay, we saw that the only I's that matter are those in between I and B, the dimension of the ring. So this, well, the dimension of R of P, right? So I guess I should say height. Uh, and I say height of P because this, if you want by definition, is the definition of R of P, right? So that's all that matters here. Uh, we saw that uh, for this, we can, we can look very locally. So for this, well, this is equal to this, and it further equals what you get when you look at the complete uh, local range. So it's, it's really, really, really local information, what this is. Um, so we can say that R is Bob Macaulay. Uh, well, everywhere, or you can also say around P, depends on your, on your focus, but you can say R is Bob Macaulay. Uh, or let's say around or at P, right? Uh, if, uh, well, so uh, the other thing I wanted to say is that in general, if you look at, uh, and I think we'll see this today, if you look at the top one, okay, this is never zero. And in principle, we'll see why today. And so I just come up calling around P if uh, you have the following vanishing. This is zero. Uh, for all i equal to zero all the way to i plus p minus one. Okay. And R is called Macaulay. If it is called Macaulay at every point, let's say. At every p. Okay. And so um, and yeah, so this coincides with all other definitions we have seen before using that, for example. Um, uh, here. So that's Kohen Macaulay. And Gorenstein is an improvement upon this. So our order. Gorenstein, if what happens? Uh, well, well, the folder means that it has to be Cosmacoli, right? So we look at the top one that we know cannot be zero. So we look at this one, right? Um, and this has to be, we saw the other day, it has to be an injective hole. This notation is like this. Of the residue field at P. Okay. So by direct computation, oh, in other words, notice what this means, right? This means IE. The other way to think about it is that when you compute the Matthews dual, let's say, uh, if you if you go ahead and write down uh, Let's say this, 
um, which you remember is just, when you look at this, I'm looking at the local rate RP, and I, and I go and look at what happens when you go to the injective hole. Let me just call this E, right? Well, this is E, right? But I'm just saying that it is this. And I just started the discussion saying that we were looking for such an object, right? We were looking for a module such that when you localize it at a point, it's not as dual, it's a local cohomology. So in other words, what it means to be Gordon Stein is like, okay, it's Kohima Coley and uh, omega r equals to r, you can just define a canonical module to be r. It's a canonical module. Okay. So a Gordon ring is a ring in which you can go ahead and define a canonical module to be the whole ring. Because when you localize it by definition, and you, okay, you compute the Matthews dual, you get top local homology, which is which is what we're looking for. So Gordon rings are those rings in which you can just do that trivially, effortlessly, without looking around too much. So examples, we already saw an example. Um, um, so regular rings are torsion. So on a regular ring, you can use the constant structure theorem, for example. Uh, and you can compute local cohomology at the completion, and it's a power series ring. Mm -hmm. And in the power series ring, you can just compute directly local cohomology at zero, and the top one is in the you have to follow the rest of the field, or is in the chai complex. Right? So the point is like locally, sufficiently locally, all local rings by the constructor theorems are identical to the polynomial ring. So you can, you can do that case, for example. And so you have that. Uh, and there, there is another example here. Uh, I guess it would be like that. So we chart the no, the other way. Uh, the complete intersection. So this tells you that there are a lot of Gaussian rings around. Really. What is a complete inter intersection? So. So I E, uh, well, the definition is, 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 is rather tricky, but let me say that, let, let's take the following definition. This I E, for example, uh, you can take a local ring, uh, regular ring. So technically speaking, I should take perhaps something like a power series ring. Uh, the, the limit ring also suffices if you do sufficiently local and so on. So you have this and a, a, a regular ring, let's take it to be S, and uh, but let's take it to be R, let's say. Okay, and then, then you take here a regular sequence, regular sequence. So it turns out that. R modulo, this regular sequence is Gornstein. This is something you can do actually, it's an exercise in the notes. This is a much more general version of the perfect converse is true. If you have a distortion in Gornstein, then the ring you started with, it has to be Gornstein. In fact, you can start it with a Gornstein ring, and whenever you portion by the regular sequence, you get another Gornstein ring. Uh, the point is the regular sequence. So there are designs in such a way that they don't interfere with cohomology. So they preserve the, the nice local cohomology. That's, that's it really. You have to do like induction and so on. 
It's a, it's a long exercise, but it's not particularly hard. Okay, so these are the canonical example of coordination rings. And so, for example, you would see that an easy case to do is that if you take R to be, for example, let me just write it down very simply, like this, you can take any any local ring with that, and you can just take a quotient by one single equation. And no matter what that equation is, that's Gordon Okay? Uh, well, so that line is not a zero device. Uh, the irregular element. So this is Gordon. So you can see that there are plenty of Gordon rings. You know, like, I mean, most rings are not Gordon but you can you can find many many examples like that. They don't have to be a regular sequence to be correlating. Uh, for example, you can look at the example rings, square matrices, and so on. Um, okay, so now let's get to business. Uh, so what are what are going some rings good for? So. Let's say what are Gorenson rings good for? Well, we saw that the canonical one can be taken to be omega. Eh, sorry, it can be taken to be the ring itself. But in particular, that's going to mean something very powerful. So let's look at the following theorem. Theorem local duality over Gorenstein rings. So let me do the local case, local duality. So for this, let's take a local ring. Okay. To be a Gorenstein local ring. Okay. Let's, let's give it a dimension. Let's say that the dimension of RSD has to be finite dimensional for this to work. So let me emphasize here that, that point. Oh, it, it is local, so it is not theory, and so that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. That's automatic because, because it is not theory. Okay. So, so then there are two functors here. Let me let me let me let me write them down. Okay, let's um okay, and so of course uh to this R we associate or attach an injective all of the residue field. Right? Uh, you can, and, and so a matrix duality is all about considering the functor D given by homing into E, right? So what is the statement of the theorem? The statement of the theorem is like, we look at two functors here. So we're gonna take D, uh, which means homing into E, and now we're going to look at homing into R, which is the other dual, dualization function one wants to consider, right? We can go ahead and compose this functor with homing into R. Um, right? Uh, So this is this is the open dualizing functor, but here and we're gonna go a bit deeper than that. This is fine, this is fine and great, but we want to improve upon this. So we're gonna take X, which is the derived version of home, right? X is just the right home. And so we, we, we have these derived dualization functors, so to speak. And we look at them, and on the other hand, we have this local cohomology modules. Let me write down D 
minus e. So these are functors. Uh, and the statement is that these two functors are not for this model. So not it's, it's a natural there's a natural like some of these functors. Naturally it's more good. Well, one could just say they're isomorphic. You know, the one, two functors are isomorphic. People like to say they're not isomorphic, but it's, it's redundant. <laughs> um, ah, well, uh, and we have to say the category on which they are isomorphic is the category of finally the uh, R modules. Um, so let's say moreover here in particular, if R is complete, so that we can apply mass duality. What this means is that uh, X I. M R and the top local cohomology here uh, M are natural naturally matches to to one another are naturally matches to okay. So that's why I was telling you that you can think of, of local duality as a way to compute matrix duals. At least it tells you that what is the matrix dual of this Cantillian module? It is this Archimian module. Well, this this, this statement in particular explains that this module is Archimian because it is a matrix dual of that Cantillian module. Oh, and this is for, for all finally generated M, okay? This only applies here. Uh, the other thing here is that I'm saying naturally. I don't mean that to be romantic. It, it means naturally in, in, a, in a precise sense. That that means that there is an, a natural isomorphism, meaning that that isomorphism would commute with homomorphism modules. You know, like I can put another module here and, and if there is any homomorphism in between them, the, the natural isomorphism here is going to commute with that morphism. So the isomorphism is a functor. It's, 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 sorry, it's, yeah, it's a natural transformation. That's what I mean. Okay. Um, yeah. So you see, we have two cohomology functors. The right X is a cohomology functor. It's a derived cohomology functor, and it is happen. It happens to be matched too well to this one. Okay. Um, and it makes a lot of sense actually once you start getting used to it. So maybe maybe at the first glance is like what's happening here. Uh, also historically, uh, the way this this worked is that uh, you wanted to have this thing served well in the black geometry. And so people were looking at like what type of obstruction singularities may pose for that to be true. And so they look at the local obstructions, and the local obstructions were given by this local cohomology. So they was the colonies, and you can see that in the rings going shine, you get like the local duality that is required for certain duality to work globally, and so on. And so these were very natural things to consider. Okay. So uh, and we want to prove that this is this is the job beyond that. The scope of this curse. Maybe at some point, like I could try to add a proof, but uh, we have so many other things to do for now. So that's very low priority.
And so the key hypothesis there for this to work is Gordon. And, and actually you see that if the statement were true, the ring has to be Gornishan. R has to be dual to the, to the top local homology, right? So like plug in N equals R, right? So if it is true, R has to be Gornishan. Actually, that has a, the following corollary. That is an exercise too. And the, the corollary is that if n is a finally generated module, then it's local. Yeah, it's so. This would follow from Matthew's duality straight away from, from local duality. But here I'm claiming that this holds even if R is not Gorin Shen. So even if R is not Gorin Shen. Um, and so in the proof, I uh, give you the hint how this goes. It's essentially, you have to reduce the, the, to, the, to the complete case. So we can see that uh, you can reduce the complete case. That's not so hard. Uh, and because this is invariant under completion, essentially. So you can reduce the complete case. And then you can use the Cahen structure theorem and certain properties that we have seen before to see that you can reduce the regular case and therefore the Gorenstein case in which just follows from matrix duality and local duality. Actually, I don't know another proof of this statement that doesn't go through that. So I think it's very non-obvious that this is Archenian, just by looking at it. It's all this local dollar business. I think, I, I don't know of any other proof of the realist. Okay. Um, ah, the, the other thing this, this shows, but we will see that later in a, in a sec, is that, if R is Gorenstein, well, the same thing. Like, this also shows that the top local cohomology of R is non zero. Why? Because it is the injective hole of the residue field, which is zero. So, okay. uh, now let's let's see how to push this further. Okay, the next goal is to, okay. Yeah, Gorenstein rings are great. In a Gorenstein ring, I can take omega r to be r, and that that, that lets me write down that uh, local duality statement. So the idea is to find a replacement. For 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 R Q, and actually, so what is next is that there is another duality statement <laughs> that is called Grothendieck duality that lets you take a Gorenstein ring and inherit or transfer the local duality the Gorenstein ring has to other rings that happen to be finite algebras over that ring. So that's what is happening here. So let's let's do that. Okay, so. Now let's take G, a Gorenstein ring, and I need this ring to, to have finite dimension. And so since, since it is Gorenstein, it is cohematoly, and therefore is equidimensional. This plays a, a, a role in this, in this business. Uh, and let's take R to be a finite G algebra. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that there exists a map G, so there exists a map from G to R in such a way that R is a finally generated G module. Okay. 
I'm not claiming it's, it's an extension. I'm just claiming that there is a finite map. So uh, actually, well, let's see. Uh, in practice, we have to do now the following. So in practice, we look at that structural map. So let's look at it. So we have G mapping to R, and it may not be injected, but it's image, you know, like we can consider the image A, and that's going to be inside it. Right? And so, well, R, if R is finite over G, it has to be finite over A. Right? So this is finite. And this is, like, this, is, this is subjective, so it is finite too. A is cyclic as a G algebra. So fine. So we have this finite map, we can always decompose it with a closed one and an injective one. Essentially. And so ah, the, the other thing I want to remark that I have said several times is that this can always be arranged. It, by the Cohen structure theorems, if R is complete, right? If R is complete, then it is it is a finite extension of a regular ring. So I can always forget of this step and just look at that, for example. Or by Galbert, I can always consider this case too. Because if R is a finite, it is a quotient of a, of a regular ring, therefore Gauguin chain. Right? So this this setup is, is easy to arrange in algebra geometry. But it's not always true in, for very general rings. So we have to think of R as a finite algebra over a Gaussian ring. Uh, and the idea is what you want is to take the duality that is taking place here and you want to, to transfer it here. Again, let, let, me, let, me, let me show you how you do that. Uh, now, for this to work, you also have to assume, assume that R. Well, something you see here is that R has finite dimension because it has to have the same dimension as A, which has dimension lower than the one of G that we assume is finite. So but we have to assume that R is uh, R, well, and so A, automatically, R epidimensional. This is important. But it would be for free, we we'll start with our Kohe Macaulay, anyways, because Kohe Macaulay rings are unmixed and therefore equidimensional. So let me, let me put the here EG, Kohe Macaulay. And so this is the recipe. First of all, well, we saw that we can take the canonical module of, of G to be G. So let's just do that. Uh, And so let's let me call let me give names to these things actually. Uh, do you want to do that? Uh, actually, let me give names to the to the corresponding maps on the spectrum. Right? Let me think of the map that goes from a spec R to spec A as F, and let me call this one I. Okay, just for fun. And so this will be a closed immersion. This one. Because A is a question of G. Okay, so I'm going to do something just to explain why that this is not extreme. What you do is that there is this formalism, there is a period that we haven't seen, but we don't want to get into that, in which you take the, the upper shape of, of omega G, which is just G. And there is a formalism called Grof and Degrowly, which is just a pure action nonsense thing. That tells you that this would be a dualizing complex here. This is a dualizing complex automatically. And so what I have to do to extract the canonical module, I will I have to shift it here actually. So the point is like I take the canonical module and I shift it by the dimension. This gives me a dualizing complex on G, and then I do this. Transformation, which guarantees that it's going to give me a dualizing complex. Um, and 
this is just for context. So that what I'm gonna, what, what I'm about to write down is not so weird. And then I have to shift it back by the dimension of A. But since this is a closed immersion, this thing is, is easy to compute. It's just X. And now I have to account for the difference of dimensions would be dimension of G minus dimension of A over G of A comma G. So that's what I was saying the other day that we don't have the, the language yet to talk about this properly. You see, I, I, if I do this, it's just very odd. It's just the upper shrink of this dualizing complex. And then I extract a cohomology that is going to give me this. So if that was too much, just forget about it and just take this equal to this. But I think it's important to know that it's coming from somewhere. It's not that. You know, like you just saw it. Oh, I'm going to define it to be the x of the national g minus a of this thing. No, it's not that. <laughs> it's, it's the upper shape. Okay? There is already a solid theory that, that, makes you, that makes you obvious. Once you're familiar with this theory, it's kind of obvious, actually. OK, so there is a, there is a story behind it that gives you this. That if you learn it, you'll see that this is not obscure. Um, okay. Um, so there is a book that is, well, for example, there's a book called Resistance Residues in Jolly, where this is explained by Harvard. Or there's another book that is called Local Homology by Harsha, uh, in which it's explained like that. And I, I, I always found that to be amazing because I, I first studied the sort of things in computer algebra textbooks, which often don't tell you the right story, which is this. Uh, it's a bit heavy, there's a price to pay, you know, that you have to learn the right categories, which is. Well, it's, it's not too bad, but you have to do it and learn the formula is one of the six forms to reduce the upper shift pool by all this stuff. But then you, you get like the right perspective. You, you really climb the mountain, and then everything is so obvious. Okay, but we're not doing that unfortunately here. So, but I, I just want to tell you a little bit about it. So, that would be the canonical module for A. Okay. So for example, that would be the canonical module of a final ring. So this is the, the G would be just a regular local ring given by Gower. Oh, this is, yeah. Oh yeah, this is correct. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, however, this is for A. Now we have to pass it to R. So to get it on R, what to do? Uh, this, is, this is the definition if you want. For R, what you do is another upper shrink. Okay. Would be the F upper shrink of omega A. Uh, and then you have to extract the cohomology. Okay. So, but here is much simpler actually because the dimension of A and the dimension of, of, of R is the same. So, since there is no different relative dimension, the F upper shrink operation is, is, is very simple and it's just home. It's the home we've been seeing, right? This is actually why I call the upper shrink the, the home thing we've been studying. Uh, so this would be just home um, from, from where is it? Uh, is, is R over A? So A, R, comma, omega A. And oh, I could have taken the upper shrink from G to R. But uh, it would have been both. It's, it's compatible to take that composition, but for close emergence and finite covers, the, the F upper shrink is very explicit. It's just that. So, okay. Then the, it gives you this, this object. Okay. And this is given to you by, again, by Grotendick Doorway. Uh, 
Um, and so, so you can see also using graph predict duality that, it, that if, if you take the, the duality for G, you can conclude that, uh, let me do this, now I'm gonna take home. Um, yeah. So let me look at this, I'm gonna look at the point and I'm gonna look at what happens. So now I'm, 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 I'm taking homes into omega, right, instead of R. I have this functor, I have this functor, and I wanna see what happens here. And so this is gonna be naturally isomorphic to the top local homology. Uh, P height of P uh, blank. These functors are naturally isomorphic. Okay? This is, this is from Burton technology, this would be easy, easy the most easy. What you do is that you take the duality statement on Gaussian ring, which is, a, which is let's say, a deep thing. Okay, the, the, it, it is where the math really lives. So you take the duality statement on broken, uh, sorry, on Gaussian rings, and then you just take the upper shriek of the statement. Okay, and it's gonna become this in commodity. Look at that, I have it right here, right? So it would become this. So you get this for free. So it's almost valid, right? I don't have the full power yet because I haven't put here X. Okay, so this one is true. Uh, in particular, I wanted to say, uh, and so well, you would see that uh, if R is complete, complete local, then this implies that at the very least, you have the, let's say, oh, and so again, I'll finally generate our modules. Um, modules, okay? This, this hypothesis is important. So you have that, these two things are in, let's say, let's put it like this, are naturally, Mathless dual. Okay, so moreover, you can also conclude, I think uh, it's an exercise here, that we are getting close to something. Um, So, well, the, the, so you get that, and in particular, uh, you can see that um, well, this accomplishes in part what we wanted, right? That we wanted um, Yeah, so in particular, you see that it's a canonical model because if you put n equals r, you get that omega r is, is mathless dual to top of homology, which is great, right? So in particular, so if you put n equals r, it gives you that omega r is the mathless dual um, so we succeeded, right? There was a promise. The promise, or what we want was to have a module omega r, but locally, well, I'm assuming the local case here to simplify it, but locally, complete locally, is not just dual to top local homology. Right? This is our team, yeah? And we just found it's in the theory and counterpart. Okay. Uh, but in general, the other thing we can do is to put n equals omega r in here. And actually, home from omega r to 
to omega r is r. So if you put um, n equals omega r, you get that uh, well, the matrix dual of R is Hn d omega R, or in other words, which is what I wanted to say, i.e., the ejective hole of the residue field is this thing. So if you want to compute the injective fall at every single point, all you have to do is to take your canonical module and look at the slope of cosmology. And that's the injective fall of the rest of the field. That's what local dollar is trying to tell you. So this is a more general statement. So you can see that omega r has better properties than r because it gives you all this. It's just a thing that the be there. We agree, but in general, what you have is this. Now that's all good. This, are, this, this means, i.e., omega r is a canonical module. But this is not the end of the story, okay? You, you want to boost it. And that's where the Macaulay property comes in. Um, so I told you that what you do is that you take the dwelling for Gorgian rings and you do the, uh, the upper shriek of all that to get a new dwelling thing. And you really get it. But you get to, to write it down properly, you have to do it in the right category. So in particular, what you really have here is, it's not home, home is too naive. What you have is the right home. You're going to have an, uh, an R home, and what you're going to have here is a derived local cohomology thing. And so, to make to make that collapse, you need to collapse the the dualizing complex. And that in that collapsing is the cohomology property. So let me write it down. You can create the path. So uh, I think we need to, a lot of space. So. Um, let, let, let me go back all the way there, but let me let me write down a few things you think. So now now E R is call him a call. And this means that the, the upper trace have no cohomology. So what, what would that mean? That would mean that, first of all, A is cohomology. And what does it mean that A is cohomology? It means that the other X over there are zero. So this part here means that A is going to be and R is going to be and so a finite extension of a going to be ring is going to be even on the if it is locally free, which actually means that the whole the order X is vanished too. It's a vanishing of X, right? Because A R is is free over A or locally free if it is projected, and being projected means that X vanished, right? And R is projective over A or locally free or flat. Let's say locally free over A, which also means that X, I, um, what did we say? It's uh, A, um, Um, uh, here, no, so it's uh, R, yeah, R, A, zero. 
So that's what Tom Macaulay means, right? And so, but in practice, when you do this calculation, what it's telling you is that you don't need to worry about the, the higher cohomology of the upper sheet. And so you can do the transfer of the duality straight away. So it, it doesn't matter if you understand this too much. All, all I want to say is that there is a context behind it that makes it naturally and not weird all. Um, okay, so if R is called Macaulay, then, then omega R is not just a canonical module, it is a dualizing module. Then omega R is a dualizing module. So all we did was to take omega R, the, this, this dualizing complex, and now it becomes in the, in the right category quasi isomorphic to omega R. Well, you have to check the theory of inertia, whatever. But... The dualizing complex, which lives there in this derived world and does a lot of magic, collapses into a module. And so it inherits all, all its good properties to omega R. And so, and therefore, we get the full power of, of duality. Theorem, local duality over Kohimakola rings. Okay. Again, Kohimakola rings are, are devised so that this happens. That's the whole point of their existence. Um, and so the point is that now you can take the pointer. Well, let me say, let's take this to be a Kohimakoli uh, local ring. Uh, then, if you look at the, the matrix pointer composed now with all the X. Um, blank omega r is naturally isomorphic to the, the local cohomology d minus i or blank for all i equals uh, zero to <laughs> Okay. That's it. And well, if this is true, actually, you see that your ring has to be Kohemakoli. Because what happens if you put here R? Well, R is projective, so this X would vanish for higher eyes. And it, it would force the top cohomology to or this this cohomology to vanish, except the top one. You see, because i equals zero corresponds to d here. So the top local cohomology is dual to omega r, <laughs> right? So it cannot be zero. That's why it's not zero. Top local cohomology is dual to omega r, and omega r is not zero. So, And so you see that for this to hold, your ring has to be cohen macaulay but conversely, the other definition we give of local cohomology is that. And so you can take it. You, 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 can, you can go ahead and take this as your definition of Kohimakoli. A Kohimakoli ring is just a ring in which it happens. That's the whole end of Yeah, that's the story. If you want to be very fancy, this could be your definition of Kohimakoli. You know, for me, a cohomology ring is a ring such that uh, the, the cohomology functor is uh, much less dual to the x one. And you see, if this is true, it has to be cohomology. But conversely, if it is cohomology, this is true. And that's really it. Makes no mistakes. This is this is really what cohomology properties and what is useful.
And historically, actually, uh, rather they invented uh, local duality just, just to formulate this. Uh, And so you would see in algebraic geometry very often the Kohemakoli hypothesis is used so, so that certain duality holds. So Kohemakoli are those similarity for which certain duality holds, because when you want certain duality to hold, you look you look at the local obstructions, and the local obstructions is is a lack of this isomorphism. So as soon as you make it possible, then certain duality holds. Locally, but this is more powerful too because if you if you take the graded case in this, which we haven't done, but if you take the graded case, this gives you certain duality for projective uh, varieties. Okay, and so right, so this this is this is a very important statement for, for sure. So we're going to be using it a lot. Um, what is next? I don't know any questions so far. Any, any? Are you happy with this? I know we haven't proved a lot of things with this, but yeah, to do it properly would take us a huge, you know, a huge deviation. But at the very least, I think I want you to be users of it, like to be able to use it and be comfortable with it. Um, okay, maybe one more conclusion that is worth writing down. Um, so in particular, which which is the case that matters because it's the singularity singularity case. In, in particular, if R is also complete. We have that this x is put here m and this other one our math is dual are naturally math is dual. One yeah, so actually, <laughs> this was funny. Like, if you, if you really decide this, you can just make it as to do that if you feel more comfortable. Uh, but actually, we're going to be going to get a way around. We often don't like this too much, and so we switch to the other It's a back and forth. Um, okay, I don't know. Have you seen this before? Is it the first time? No? Uh, okay, see, if there are no other questions, we can move on. So, some things I've seen that open you mentioned that for some properties. Like you need R to be complete, but also like it works if R is a fine. Yeah. See the see the case in all of these properties with the matrix duality that you use the R to be complete. Yes, it's because of matrix duality. Matrix duality only works if R is complete. So what what is true is that if I take V of this, I get that. Mm -hmm. But if I get D of this. I only get this after taking the base chain with completion. When you replace R instead complete with a binary? Uh, I cannot use matrix dual. But I have to be the local case, for example. So the, the issue is that if I take, so what is true is that if I take this, the matrix dual of HM, so if, you know, like to write this down, I have to work in the local case anyway. So what this gives me is only the base, the flat base change. Of this, uh, 
Well, we're checking from here actually. Let me put here hat because I need finally generated. And then and, and the and the completion here. So I wouldn't recover this. I want I, I would only recover it after completion. So I say complete so that the map is well that is really back and forth. But what is true here is if I copy D of this, I get that. But D is a local thing too, right? So to, to compute D of this, for example, uh, well, what I can always do is like I can look at this and I can always localize it and then I can apply D and I get that. So, but for, for so what is true about F finiteness is that it's E to an omega. That's it. So for, for omega to exist, you need R to be a finite algebra over a Gordian ring. A finite ring satisfy that. So they come equipped with the canonical module. And the canonical module will have these properties, which are local properties. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So a finiteness is used to ensure that omega is, exists. But if you have a complete ring, even if it's not a finite, omega exists too because complete rings by the Cohen structure theorems are finite algebras over, over well, like regular rings even. Okay. Um, it's very tough, right? Like to 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 be here for hour and hour and twenty minutes. I don't know why we do that. I think it would be way better than um, three lectures of fifteen minutes. Or to be honest, just two lectures of fifteen minutes. It's very broad. Okay. Is that like that everywhere in Mexico? Or is that the same thing? No, it depends. The place. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was I was talking to Lisa about it and he was out oh, worried they're used to it. That, that's all they know. <laughs> so they're, they're used to suffering. Or at least they didn't notice. But I don't know. Is it, is it tiring to you to be a lecture for an hour and 20 minutes? I mean but when it's something like in the case of this new, like it's a little bit tired. Okay. Um yeah. I know I understand. Uh, so in a sense, I'm trying to go slowly. Actually, I just you see it like like right now. I, I just say that I just say the same thing over and over. Trying to be aware that actually it's it's very difficult. Uh, it's been a lecture for so many, well, not so many hours for so long. And yeah, this is, and I know this is, I, I think this is what, this is going to be the peak of abstraction of this curve. I feel like from, from now on, it's going to go down. Um, so actually, what is next is to talk about uh, the functoriality properties of this, uh, which again comes given by Grot and Um So, okay, finally. Let's talk about the Cartier operator. Operator and a bit of F inductivity. So this is the thing. So let's look at an extension here. And so, so the point of the graphic equality applies to proper morphisms in general. And in the affine setting, being proper means being finite. So let's take a finite extension. And let's let's take that to be the, the amount of one year away on the spectrum. Um, so, so what happens is that if we know that omega r has a canonical module, sorry, if we know that r has a canonical module omega r, then thanks to Grothendieck, and we're just going to blame him here or, or thank him for that, automatically, if I three of omega r, which is uh, Omega, sorry, home as omega r, 
Okay, super concretely is a canonical model. Is a canonical model. So, so the point is like once you have a canonical module, growth dually gives you a recipe to construct canonical modules for all finite extensions. So just do that. And you're going to have an inside of it. Okay. But here's the thing. What if for some other reason you already had a canonical module? So this is the this is the question here, the delicate question. What if you already have a canonical module omega s for some other reason, right? Because if you have, if, if you have, maybe you know that s, you know, was a finite algebra over another Gaussian room or something. So, what, how do you compare that? That's the problem. So, well, you already have some uniqueness statements for these sort of things. So, what you can say is that. The one you get from R, it has to be isomorphic to omega s up to tensoring with some invertible module. This is simply a locally free module of rank one. When you localize L at every single P, you get a copy of, of your local ring. Okay? But it's, it is an obstruction there. Um, so in particular, but there are good news. So if S is local, S is, and so R, if S is local, R has to be local, R local. Well, then L has to be isomorphic to S. So we have that, they are isomorphic. Not canonical or anything, you just know they are isomorphic. And so this is great because this one here comes equipped with a trace. Right? We have a trace of omega r which goes from here to its f upper tree back to omega r. Right? It, the trace is the co unit of the lower star upper tree adjoinance relationship, as we have seen. So, this guy here has this map. And so, but the mega S is just isomorphic to it. So, you can just go ahead and up to some isomorphism, do this. And here you have abuse notation because, in principle, you know, you have that. Or what you can do is just forget about the one you had and just use this one, something like this, okay? And so this is the famous trace in between canonical modules to which app do you think we're going to apply it for, for base. But for that to happen, you need this, this relationship. That's a tricky one. In my head, this sits as Carl's famous uh, trick condition. Uh, so, well, I, I say this because, because if, you, if you often look at Carl's paper, he always has this so called like trick condition, like warning condition. This is a hypothesis you need to have for this to work. Uh, so, let me, let me put that just here. So, where, where are we? Uh, yeah. Um, okay, before, before before we continue, okay, I have this trace. Um, and actually, what is cool about this trace is that it generates the, the home set between these two objects. And that's again duality, right? The duality involves that. So, in fact, um, if you write this down, uh, actually, the percentage is literally this. Uh, so, 
this is an isomorphism. So in other words, the, the set of paths from here to here are is generated by, by that trace. Um, okay, uh, and uh, and so actually we 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 also kind of saw this already. If if we apply this is the first thing I want to mention. And the other thing we need is that like, if we apply D to this trace, what do you think we get? Well, if we apply duality, what, what, is, the, what is the dual of omega R? Yeah, so, so we get the top log of the homology of uh, R and so in principle here we should be getting the uh, so what here what we're gonna get is have to shift it and so here we have to use this property I was mentioned the other day. Uh, so in principle, I have to compute the local cohomology here, let's say, of, of S. Uh, but we know that the local cohomology of S can be computed over R or over S itself. So here I can just go ahead. In principle, I have to replace by this extension of the maximal ideal. But since this is the same thing after radical, I can just take the radical and the radical of that is exactly that. And S and R have, have the same dimension. And so, and so this the map that goes here is actually because natural the the, 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 the isomorphism is natural, it has to be this actually. It's, it's the local homology of, of, of the extension. You know, like there is a map from R to S. If you want, this is F hashtag, uh, where F hashtag. Here I'm using the, the, the language of the scheme to express this, but it's, it's just a map that represents the extension from R to S, right? And so I can take a look at the homology of this map. And if you think about it, it's going to give me a map that goes from here to here. And what I'm claiming is that, well, that happens to be D of that. In particular, if R and therefore S were complete, the map is dual of this trace is just. The, the, the what you get when you apply local homology to that final extension. Okay. Actually, we have encountered. Uh, remember, when we, we were doing. I don't know what. And we computed D or some trace, and we got like, some E's with injective holes. But now these injective holes have become this. And, uh, it's, it's just an extension of that. Okay. Um, we're almost done. We're almost there. Where is that? That's a machine and paper. And now we want to apply this to Frobenius. So, what is the first condition we need to apply this to Frobenius? We started to say that R inside S is proper. It is finite because growth and duality only applies in that case, actually, famously. Uh, so we need already to be f finite, and actually that's 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 a very very important reason why people insist on f finite rings only, because they want to apply what I'm about to say. So let's apply this to Frobenius. And the views too, in particular. If R is a finite and reduced, meaning that the Frobenius is injected, it's an extension. Um, what, what did I put in my notes? And if upper strip of omega r is isomorphic 
to omega r, which is the condition I was telling you, I was saying, this is, this is what I was saying, this car uh, upper uh, shift condition. But this holds, eg, r is local, but it holds in another setup too. Um, so you, what you want is to have some omega r with this property. But it also holds if R is essentially of finite type over K, over, over some a finite field. But it's a finite because R is a finite. So for varieties, essentially. So the two important contexts of algebraic geometry satisfy this. But it's not true in general that you can guarantee this. So, and just, just the reason why this whole, it's not obvious at all in this case. But the point here is that if you have something like this, what that means is that R is defined over K. Okay, and then the, and, and what, what this means is essentially that R is essentially proper <laughs> over K in the language of algebraic geometry. And therefore, there is an ex a structural map K. To a spec of k. And k has a you can scale Gorange. So you can take something like this. Uh, and then like there would be let's call this pi or whatever. And, and so therefore the formalism tells you that you can take the, the upper trick of that to be omega. That's it. I have k so omega r. And therefore uh, and you can guarantee that addition. So in other words, if you rank is is properly defined over something nice, then you can you can hook up omega r to be that. And then you you also are guaranteed the compatibility. Okay. Um, it's a delicate matter, but if you are local, which is the case here for, for most of the time, or if you're working with varieties, you have nothing to fear. Okay. Yes, if you have that, then you have a map from here to here. And this is uh, the trace, the Frobenius trace of omega r. But now we're going to give it a, a beautiful name, which is kappa. This is a Cartier operator. The Cartier operator. That I wanted to define all this time. Um, and now we apply the previous remarks to this. And so first of all, we have that it generates this concept. Here you can put E in here. Watch. You can iterate it and you get that map. So this kappa E gives you all possible mass from here to here. Oops. That's that's why it's called a forbidden trace. Or because it generates that. Um, and so when R is Gorenstein. You see that it, you can put here R. <laughs> and that's why you see why for Gorishan ring, the whole set is principal. Because it is always principal for omega. But for Gorishan rings, omega is R. Um, right? And the math is dual of kappa. Now, this is the point I wanted to make. This, this is the object that lets you understand singularities. F singularities. This is the conceptual and Ethereum object. And now we compute this matrix dual. What do you think it is? Well, it's going to be, uh, well, in the local case, of course, or if you want to localize, so I mean, R is local, let's do it like this. And so it's going to be D of Frobenius. It's going to be the local cohomology of Frobenius. You see? And so what is this map? This is a map that goes from here to here. 
it's, it's not our linear actually because it would be this squeeze right to be this. And there you are. The matrix dual of the free in Cartier operator is the action of Frobenius on local cohomology. And that's what matters. Because how Frobenius acts on local cohomology is gonna, is gonna be the important thing in practice. If something, if something here is killed by Frobenius, that's an issue. Okay? And so that's the counterpart uh, on in that singularities will be this, this kappa because they're related by duality, matrix duality. Okay? That's, that's the whole point here that I wanted to make today. Um, let me see. Uh, well, I guess next time we can start with F injectivity. Uh, but in a nutshell, this thing here is part of the notion of objectivity. And we'll see that later, or uh, so what else? Just, just one more thing. This kappa, this kappa ER may look mysterious, but locally we always know what it looks like, essentially. Um, so, so for example, in, 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 a, in a local ring, uh, Uh, so let, let me do this. Uh, the kappa, let me say the kappa, this is an exercise of the power series ring, it's just a ring with a P basis, is, is the P we were talking about, the Frobenius trace. For Gorenstein rings, kappa is, is always a Frobenius trace. So we saw, actually, we saw that how you compute a generator for the home set for complete intersections. This is a Feathers criterion type thing. And it's a Fabinius trace because complete intersections are core interesting and, and, and they have to be generated by the trail, which is just that. But yeah, so it's a, it's a more general thing about the core interesting rate. So, um, and yeah, let's, let's stop here. Next time, we're going to talk about a bit, not too much, about F injectivity. Um, and also, we're going to see the next ingredient, which are normal rings. That's the other ingredient because omega is not so great by itself. It's, it's really good when you're working over, over normal rings because then you can attach to the so called canonical divisor or the canonical class. And then computation becomes way clearer, way easier to do. So, that's a good one.